Today, we're talking about the Vaporfly 4% Ekaden. Ten point four three miles, seven minutes, nineteen seconds per mile, running in the Nike Vaporfly four percent Ekaden, and having just an absolutely great time out there today. But first, before I get into my thoughts on this shoe, let me go over some disclosures. Uh, for this one, there are none. This is a pair of shoes that I bought with my own money. No one knows that I'm making this video. No one's paying me to make this video. This is a pair of shoes that I've been waiting for for a very long time, and I was very happy when I was finally able to get it. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about with the disclosures out of the way is, is this really an Ekaden Vaporfly 4%? Now, I saw the Ekaden pack released earlier, I think it was this year, and I was just amazed by the colors and I instantly wanted it. I was looking all over StockX for a very long time to try to find a pair that was under $400, but for the longest time, it just stayed above that price and there weren't even that many pairs changing hands from what I could tell. So then when I saw that Nike had released a new color of the Vaporfly 4% and it looked like this, I was instantly intrigued. I bought it right away. And then I was wondering how come they're not calling it Ekaden? I'm not sure. Maybe it's not, maybe it's just the same colors, but different than that collab version or that special version. Um, but here's the reasons why I'm gonna call this Ekaden, even though it doesn't say it anywhere on either the box that it came with, it doesn't come with a special box, just the regular Nike running box and even though it doesn't say anything on the website either. The two reasons why I'm gonna call it Ekaden is because this part right here where it says the 4%, it, it is in Japanese. So that's number one, very different from the other versions of the Vaporfly. And then on the insole, there is a Mount Fuji graphic and the insole is a different color than the regular Vaporfly insole. So I'm gonna go with Ekaden for this. Uh, someone feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, if there's something different else that I should be looking for. I haven't really been able to find any uh, information articles or photos to say it one way or the other. Regardless of what it is, I think this is just an absolutely beautiful shoe. I love white fly knit. I've not had a white fly knit shoe before. And this just, I think, looks incredible. But the one thing that I will say is this swoosh that's on here, it's bright crimson, I think is the technical Nike color name for it. Um, it's orange. To me, it's definitely orange. I thought that this was gonna be like bright white with a bright red swoosh on it. Uh, all the photos that I was able to see online 
indicate that it was like not maybe a solid red like this shirt red, but I thought it was going to be a very red swoosh. Opening the box, looking at it, it looks very, very much orange to me. Um, a little bit like a, I guess like a darker orange, but very much um, an orange shoe. So that was a bit of a surprise. A little bit disappointing because I don't like it quite as much as I thought I would like it compared to the pictures. But nevertheless, a very clean shoe just looks absolutely great. Um, probably one of my favorite uh, designs uh, for a Flyknit shoe, whether it's a Zoom Fly Flyknit or the Vaporfly. Uh, I just think that this looks absolutely amazing and I'm very excited to have it. In terms of the actual performance of the shoe, it's the same Vaporfly 4%. There's nothing new or different about it. But I will say there's a couple of things that I noticed. Now, you guys will remember that I ran in the Vaporfly 4% last year in the Chicago Marathon. That was in October. And then instantly after the race, I had to give my pair of shoes to Nike. They took them and gave me back the shoes dipped in gold. But uh, it took a really long time for that to happen. Uh, and in the meantime, I did pick up a pair of uh, version one Vaporfly the vast gray and I ran in that. But the last time I even ran in those, I think would have been December when I did my Santa run. And so from that time in December till now, late March, I haven't run in Vaporfly. At least I don't think I have. And I kind of forgot, I think, what it felt like. My first impressions running in this Vaporfly after having spent months not running on a pure Zoom X shoe, uh, is that it's not, it wasn't as soft as I remembered it. And uh, there were definitely points during today's run where my right foot right around in the arch area was feeling a little bit of discomfort and or fatigue. So I wasn't really sure what was going on. Uh, but after the run, as I was finishing the run and then walking uh, inside my building to get home, I de then did feel the same softness uh, in the Zoom X foam. So I don't know if it's just a break-in issue or what, but uh, in terms of the run itself, uh, the proof is in the pudding for sure. Uh, I was able to get that same push off strength, uh, that, that very slight uh, toe off kind of feeling that you get in here. It's not as drastic as what I was feeling in the Zoom Fly Flyknit, but you still feel it a little bit and it definitely helps you power through your stride. And in terms of the paces, what I wanted to do was try to run two miles at my goal half marathon pace, uh, which would be my BQ pace uh, for hopefully later this year. Uh, and I was able to hit that without any problem. In fact, uh, I felt so good. I did four miles at my goal marathon pace. Uh, and in fact, they were all under seven minutes closer to my goal half marathon pace. So uh, I just absolutely amazed with uh, how this shoe felt. I was able to get up to speed, just lock in and go. And it was just felt absolutely fantastic. Today was the first time where I actually felt like I could put together enough marathon pace miles where with some more training throughout this entire spring and summer, by the time I get to the fall, I think that uh, that goal marathon pace might actually be attainable, which is something that I kind of mathematically, I felt like I could do it, but on, on the inside, I didn't believe really that I could do it. This is get, getting me to start feeling like I believe I can do it. So that's just uh, a really great feeling, a great confidence booster. I've had a good, a uh, couple of weeks, even though the running really hasn't been all that consistent uh, with the Shamrock Shuffle and with the run today, feeling really confident about my current state uh, and my level of fitness for right now. Uh, and that's just something that uh, now that works kind of like getting back to normal, life's getting back to normal. I'm gonna be able to build on that. I'm very excited to see uh, what that's uh, gonna do for me. But uh, let me know if you have any questions about this particular uh, Vaporfly or if you have questions about Vaporflies in general, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Uh, but before I go, I want to talk about our charity runner for the week. The charity runner for the week is Phil Dawkins. He's going to be running the London Marathon in just about a month, and he's raising money for MSUK, an organization dedicated to helping those with multiple sclerosis. Uh, I've already donated 70 pounds to Phil's fundraising efforts, and I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?